We are just nine hours away from the polls opening at 6 a.m. Missouri is a battleground state that the nation is watching. Good evening, everyone. I'm Jim Marie. And I'm Emily Spain. Thanks for joining us. President Trump is here in Cape Girardeau tonight for to campaign for Josh Hawley. The state's current attorney general is trying to win Claire McCaskill's U.S. Senate seat. Mm -hmm. This is the president's last stop before the election. KMU 8's Kosh Carriage is live in Cape waiting for our president to take the podium. Kosh. Hi, Jim and Emily. We are live in this arena. The energy keeps getting higher and higher. They were throwing apparels into the crowds and they have been chanting USA many, many times. We are still waiting on the president to walk in, but it is confirmed that he has landed in Cape Girardeau. President Trump is coming here to endorse Republican U.S. Senate candidate Josh Hawley. He went to Fort Wayne, Indiana, as well as Cleveland, Ohio, before landing in Missouri. And it is unsure when he's going to come out, but it should be any moment now. And of course, we will have live updates on our Twitter and our Facebook. Live in Cape Girardeau, Caution Carriage, KMU8 News. In a race that's too close to call, McCaskill made her final tour around Missouri today, stopping in Columbia to meet with veterans. KMU8 Skylar Webb has more about what McCaskill said on her last day of campaigning. Senator McCaskill made a stop this afternoon in Columbia. She was surrounded by veterans and the chairman of the Missouri Democratic Party. McCaskill took this time to remind area voters what she thinks will help ease decision making when they go vote. She told listeners to cast their votes for the candidate that does the work they promise. I think that it's really important that we remember that this campaign is about issues. Uh, it's just not about they stink, he stinks, she stinks. It's about what you get done and how you get that work done. The website Real Clear Politics, which averages the national news organization's projections, has Hawley ahead of McCaskill by 0.6 points with 46.8% of the vote. In the studio, Skylar Webb, KOMU8 News. Well, security cameras can catch all sorts of things. A Columbia woman says her camera caught someone swapping out campaign flyers at her doorstop. Take a look at this video here. A man wearing a black jacket with GOP written across his shoulder removes a piece of Claire McCaskill doormail and puts it in his pocket. He then look, takes a look around before replacing McCaskill's doormail with Josh Hawley doormail. Lindsay Richardson posted the video on Facebook. It's been shared nearly 600 times. KOMU was unable to confirm if the person on camera was with the Holly campaign. Several groups are trying to get Missourians out to vote tomorrow. KOMUH Ariel Cadet is here in the studio to show us the last minute preparations. The group Faith of Visions is spending the night calling prospective Missouri voters. The multi-faith, multi-racial grassroots group has been working since September, focusing on minority voters who did not vote in the last midterm election. Along with phone banking and going door to door, the group remains pe reminds people across mid-Missouri that their voice matters. Their biggest objective is to get voters to vote yes on Proposition B in Amendment 1 tomorrow. However, many of the volunteers said they just really want to encourage people to get out to the polls. Our constitution starts off with we the people. It doesn't say they the people. So we the people need to reclaim our power and show up and try to make a difference in our country's future that we love. Polling stations open at 6 a.m. tomorrow morning and will close at 7 p.m. To find your polling location, go to showmeboon.com. In the studio, Ariel Cadet, KMU8 News. Voters will find a variety of things on their ballot tomorrow, from local races to amendments, including Amendment 1, also known as Clean Missouri, which will, would adopt several ethics reform provisions. Amendments 2 and 3, in combination with Proposition C, will allow for medical marijuana use in the state. Amendment 4 will reduce regulations on advertising bingo games. Also, if passed, Proposition B would gradually increase the state's minimum wage. Proposition D will increase the fuel tax to help pay to fix roads and bridges and fund the state highway patrol. Columbia police arrested a man accused of robbing the Commerce Bank near Providence and Nifong this afternoon. Police say 34-year-old Roger Ballinger showed a gun and demanded money at the counter. Police say he left with an unknown amount of cash. They say Ballinger implicated himself in several other robberies the past two years. Those robberies occurred at O'Reilly Auto Parts, Merchants and Farmers Bank, and Great Southern Bank. 
Facebook users have exposed a possible scam in the death of Darnell Gray. He's the four-year-old Jefferson City boy whose body was found last week. A person by the name of Mandy Campbell, who lives in Maryland, created a GoFundMe page and asked donations to cover the boy's funeral. A user says the account collected $1,300 before it was taken down after several complaints. GoFundMe's website states donors who feel their money has been misused or mis guided can get it back through the company's guarantee policy. The Better Business Bureau warns to double check where your donation is going. The red flags are the same as they would be in most types of charitable giving. If you're being pressured to give on the spot, that is a huge red flag. Um, you want to make sure that the charity business or cause is transparent. The donation page was created the same night Gray was found dead in Jefferson City, October 30th. The family plans to hold a funeral this week in Chicago. Columbia is covered with electric scooters. Love them or hate them. We'll tell you what the city council is saying about how to enforce potential new ordinances. Plus, with Veterans Day coming up this weekend, how Columbia College started honoring veterans a little early. And temperatures haven't cooled too much from earlier this afternoon. We're just in the upper 40s here right now. We have some clearer sky that's starting to roll in that is going to really plummet our temperatures by sunrise. I'm tracking more moisture for the end of this week, plus cold temperatures too. That's coming up after the break. And here's another live look at the campaign event for Holly and Cape Girardeau. And Jim, this, this is a little bit different than when he came to Columbia. Right, because that rally was held there at the airport. He simply got off the plane and stepped to the podium. But here, it's about a 10-minute drive from the Cape Girardeau Airport to the Southeast Missouri State University campus. This is the basketball arena. So a whole different uh, situation with security at this event. Absolutely. More security is needed on, because of that motorcade. And that's a large crowd, just like we saw last Thursday in Columbia. Sure is. We'll be right back. And here's one more look at the Show Me Center in Cape Girardeau. That is Rush Limbaugh at the podium. He is, will be joined by Sean Hannity at some point as well. And then the president will be right back. Okay, Kenton, thank you very much. Moving on to tonight's Target 8 Fact Check. An ad attacks the office Josh Hawley holds now as the Missouri Attorney General. Tomorrow, Hawley faces incumbent Senator Claire McCaskill. KOMU 8's Ian Nickens takes a look into the claims. SMP is responsible for the content of this advertising. The Senate Majority PAC made this ad. Their goal is to win Senate races for Democrats. KOMU8 has checked some of its work already. This first claim. Josh Hawley started his career at a lobbying firm in D.C. that represents big insurance companies. Previous reporting shows Hawley did in fact used to work for a firm called Hogan Lovells, which has lobbied for companies like Aflac and USAA. This claim is true. Now, Hawley's running for Senate, backed by $18 million in secret dark money. We fact-checked this one before, too. Senate majority clearly likes to hit the same notes in their ads. KOMU8 has found the $18 million figure comes from two PACs, the Senate Leadership Fund and the National Republican Senatorial Committee. Those PACs are not inherently dark money groups. They could become dark money groups, but then again, so could the Senate majority PAC. This claim is misleading and needs context. Next claim. Holly flies on a lobbyist plane. The Senate Majority PAC got this information from Politico, which pulled up some public records and found Holly did in fact fly on a lobbyist plane. That money and the plane came from Travis and Kelly Brown. The plane is registered to the Brown's mailing address. Brown is a registered lobbyist. Last but not least, the Senate Majority Fund cites the New York Times as saying Holly's term as the Missouri Attorney General has been mismanaged and chaotic. The article does say both of those things, but that's just the tip of the iceberg. This report says Holly's office has been slow in investigations and some of Holly's staff question if the AG put in 40-hour work weeks. Holly responded to the article the next day on a Springfield TV station, refuting the report and saying his office has been aggressive in its work. Overall, this ad is mostly true. The news sources it cited has the facts right, but claiming a connection to dark money is too vague and difficult to prove. Ian Nickens, KOMU8 News. Okay, Ian, thank you very much. We've done a series of fact checks this political season covering an equal number of ads on McCaskill and Holly. Those are on our website, KOMU.com. Columbia College is hosting Veterans Week. Miniature flags and yellow ribbons were placed around campus to honor veterans. The college will also hold a seminar Thursday to discuss health care availability for veterans. Any, um, any sort of education, any sort of ways that we can uh, show how important our veterans are is a great thing for not only our college community, but the Columbia community in general. 
The Veterans Whole Health Seminar is Thursday from 6 to 7.30 p.m. Speaking of Columbia College, Cougar Bait came in the form of a pirate tonight. We've got soccer highlights coming up. But first, here's another live look at President Trump's rally in Cape Girardeau. He just walked out on the stage there, and actually he was scheduled to come to Cape back in September, but canceled that rally because of Hurricane Florence. He is here in Missouri once again rallying for Josh Hawley. We'll be right back. Here's another live look at the campaign rally for Josh Hawley and Cape Girardeau. President Trump there at the podium. This is being held on the Southeast Missouri State Campus. The uh, auditorium, the, the gymnasium where uh, they play basketball is called the Show Me Center. And uh, it's a large building, uh, probably maybe even a larger crowd than, than 7,000, than perhaps, a, well, perhaps probably about the same size crowd yeah. as in Columbia last week. Yeah, and the, the uh, wide shots of that arena, it is a packed house yep. there. Coming up tonight at 10, we just received news of an RNC campaign staffer fired for changing doormail signs in Columbia. We'll show you exclusive video of that at 10. Plus, KOMUH Landon Burke breaks down election security challenges in mid-Missouri with growing fears of outside influence. That's coming up at 10. Kenton. Temperatures are in the upper 40s right now, but by sunrise, remember, they are going to be cooling down into the lower 40s here for Election Day. Remember, 6 a.m. to 7 p.m. tomorrow. Highs in the middle 50s, a lot of sunshine, but some more cloud cover by the afternoon. But it will be dry, a little breezy. I like that Election Day forecast. Yeah, you can That's see helpful. right where it's happening. Looks right. like perfect day to go out and vote. I don't like the 22 degrees coming up later this week. That's Yeah. yeah. Can't do anything about that. Hey, you that, don't got to vote for me. <laughs> <laughs>